podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. The Museum of Life and Science has been a fixture in Durham for a long time, but if you haven't visited lately, you're in for a surprise. John Bolenbacher recently explored this fascinating science park. the Museum of Life and Science in Durham. Everyone who has been to the museum will recognize the towering spaceship from afar and have an idea of what they're in for. But if you haven't been in a while, or if you haven't been when the weather is warm, you might be surprised at how much more science they've packed into the museum. We are an 84-acre science park, and we are actually one of the top visitor attractions in North Carolina. So see, it's not really even a museum. Well, obviously there is a museum, but the Museum of Life and Science has mainly grown out and about into a science park. So experience your science this summer outdoors. We have Magic Wings Butterfly House, which is actually one of the largest butterfly pavilions in the southeast, along with Dinosaur Trail, which is our newest exhibit. And just imagine walking along a winding forest path to the late Cretaceous period. And then along with that, there's a fossil dig site, and the dirt actually comes from the ocean floor so people can sift through this dirt to find fossils that are 23 million to 5 million years old. And everything they find is theirs to keep. So you can come away with a 23 million year old shark tooth, or bone, or shell. Where else can you do that? The only problem, who's doing more digging, the kids or their parents? So uh, who's having more fun out here, you or him? <laughs> <laughs> right now I am actually, <laughs> but um, no, we're just walking around. He likes he likes the dinosaurs and uh, he likes rocks and stuff. So if we can identify anything, yeah, I, yeah, I watched for a while and then I was like, come on, we can find something, and, and I got in there myself, we got a shovel, and, and we found some. So. But it's probably a good sign, especially since even the pros seem excited about this exhibit. I'm actually a, a archaeologist, so. <laughs> Kid. I think it's an amazing setup. I'm really glad they did it. I, it'll keep the kids fascinated, I think, hopefully for life. Case in point. There's a place where we got to dig for fossils. It was pretty fun. And look at this. And we found a shark, too. Hold it up there. It's a Come real on. thing. Next on your outdoor science adventure is Exploring the Wild, which has also been expanded by the Museum of Life and Science. First stop along the trail are five rescued black bears, and that's one other reason to like this museum. Most of its animals are rescues. Well, we have a new bear named Yona. She's only a year old, and she was found along the roadside in Townsend, Tennessee, and unfortunately was unable to be returned to the wild, and so she was brought here to the museum. A little further on, you can try to get a glimpse of the elusive, endangered red wolf. The high-tech museum also offers telephoto cameras that you can control to get a closer look. After learning a little more about lemurs, it's time to move on to some physics. And what better way to experience catching the wind than getting the feeling of what it must be like to fly. Or you can experiment capturing the wind with a miniature sailboat at the sailboat pond. Learn about airflow in the mist garden or watch seeds travel at the seed tower. <laughs> Point is, at the Museum of Life and Science, fun and learning can't be separated, even in the outdoors. Oh, it's beautiful. What a great day. A perfect spring day, and all the animals are out and active, so it's, it's a great day. You know, there's a lot of activities for the kids to be involved in and digging up bones and kind of learning about different things with science without them even really realizing that they're learning something. So I think it's a great museum for that reason. It really gets the kids involved and teaches them all kinds of new things. While well, the museum, I mean Science Park, has all kinds of new attractions, you can always count on the standbys like the farmyard. And if the kids still aren't tired, don't worry. We have plenty of play areas for the kids where they can just let loose. And there's actually a, a park that we have where they can go in and actually bang on a few drums. There's a number of things here for, for kids and for adults. 
a few drums? How about bells, wind chimes, anything they can get their hands on? And parents, there's probably one more exhibit you'll be interested in, and it's back inside, upstairs. After all the running and the craziness and the, the learning that's been happening, there's a relaxation exhibit where you can sit back, listen to some calming music, and actually watch your heart rate drop. Look straight ahead and focus your gaze from a single spot or object. For more information on the Museum of Life and Science in Durham, visit them online at ncmls.org. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.